Okay, great. Um, thank you for the introduction, actually. Um, yeah, I'm from University of Erlangen. I'm now currently a postdoc, so because I have a very short talk, so I would like to have you run at my poster. So I'm going to talk about uh, cooperative micars in the context of the chemical res resistance. <coughs> so let's first talk about this E2F1 transcript factor. It's a very complicated um, gene cancer gene, and it has been shown to regulate uh, cell proliferation as well as uh, cell apoptosis. And it also has been shown that the overexpression of this uh, transcript factor is related with the uh, chemical resistance in the uh, cancer patients. So that's why we want to investigate whether we can find a way to regulate the expression of this gene and to get some benefits for the patient. <laughs> so my cry, as we already talked about this, it's a non-coding array about 20 to 25 nucleotide, nucleotides in next and repressed gene expression individually or cooperatively. And it has been shown that this my cry many uh, regulate gene expression through um, binding to the 3' UDR of the uh, messenger and then it can lead to the degradation of the transcript or leads to the tr um, translation inhibition of the transcript. Uh, it has also been recently shown that when the two micro are spiding um, proximately and in this uh, uh, nucleotide range, you can see that the increased degradation of transcript or increased uh, translation inhibition of the transcript. So the question we want to ask, can we improve the response of the tumor cells to the chemo therapy through repressing the E2F1 repression? and by my clients, and how can we do that? To answer these questions, I adopted this uh, system biology approach in which we first um, identify the cooperative my clients targeting E2F1, and by analyzing the structure of those uh, um, triplets, we try to um, find the most reliable um, my clients pairs, and then integrate this uh, my regulation into a network model, which is underlying the um, camera resistance of, uh, um, of tumor cells uh, regulated by E2F1, as a result, we integrate computational simulations and uh, experiment validations to show this is a possible um, mechanism to regulate the uh, uh, U2F1-related chemical resistance in the tumor cells. <coughs> so first we do is like we identified um, um, five pairs of the micrites which can cooperatively regulate U2F1, we scan the whole genome of human genome and then try to identify the and micar targeting sites on the 3 prime unit of E2F1, and we also analyze their structure. For example, we have this uh, cell distance between their micar binding sites and also the potential energy coming out of uh, molecular dynamic simulations to indicate the stability of the triplets, as well as the uh, equilibrium concentrations, which indicates how um, possibly the micars are associated to form the triplets of the, of, with the E2F1 messenger RNAs. So by using this uh, information and structural information, we set up a mathematical model. This is a mathematical model accounting for the E2F1 repression by the cooperative micrites. We want to use this model to show how these cooperative micrites can regulate E2F1 expression. And as a result, we simulate how these micrites um, individually or cooperatively regulate E2F1 expression. And we also configure a um, calculative uh, number to indicate how much repression gain was uh, uh, get by using combined micrites. So when these micrites um, are simultaneously upregulated, you see the bigger number of this here, you have the more chance to observe this uh, cooperative regulation of e 2 one by these two micrites. And from our identified five micrite probative pairs, we have shown that it's micrite 205 and micrite 342 are the most reliable one to regulate uh, E2F1. And so that's why we want to test further in the experiment. For that, we have collaborated with our experiment collab um, experimentist. So we test whether these two micrites can really cooperate to repress E2F1 expression in, in vitro. So we have tested them in the two types of cancer cell lines, the small lung cell, uh, non-small cell lung cancer and cell line, and also the melanoma cell line. We first show how these micrites are expressed in the different cancer cell lines by transfecting the micro mimics, and also we show that after transfecting the mimics of micro mimics, we show the down regulation of, um, of the um, messenger RNA through the luciferous activity, but this is a reflection of the messenger RNA down regulation. And uh, finally, we also show that E2F1 rep uh, repression happens at the protein level, and uh, obviously that the most uh, significant down regulation is happening when both micrites are simultaneously upregulated. So this has somehow indicated that these two micrites can completely regulate the, an, ex, an expression of the E2F1. So to further show whether this uh, regulation is synergistic, we tried different combinations of the micrites 
and by increasing them from 0 to 0.25 microgram to 1 micrograms. As we see here, the most significant downregulation of e 2 f one still happens at the combined micron treatment. And then we want to see whether this is really synergistic. We bought this uh, combination in the index term from the uh, um, cancer drugs, where it's usually to see whether drugs have a uh, synergistic effect on the uh, tumor cells or patients. And then to, we find, found that these two microns can really synergistically repress the uh, E2F1 expression in vitro, at least in these two types of cells we have tested. So by um, validating this uh, E2F1 regulation by this cooperative two microns, the next question we want to say is like, can we really benefit of these uh, uh, patients by using these two microns in the context of chemo resistance? So this is a question we want to address. To do that, we first construct a model. This model is uh, uh, created from the, our knowledge and our um, an understanding about it with one related hypo, hyp, um, apoptosis. So it has surrounding singling pathways uh, of it with one, and also we have integrated this uh, micron regulation, uh, micron mediated regulation of it with one, as well as uh, another variable accounting for the um, cell apoptosis. So this uh, model is somehow composed of 12 ordinary differential equations and 45 um, parameters. These parameters are characterized by our um, previous data or um, literature data. And this model is somehow plays a role to help to understand the mechanism underlying the ETF-related chemoresistance. So what we do next is we want to simulate whether these two microns can really help to improve the ETF-1 chemoresistance. So at first you see that when, when no, ETF-1 is not uh, overexpressed, then the biochemists are also at uh, normal uh, expression, you are, and the, the simulation shows that when the cancer cells are in these non-resistance rooms, but when you increase the E2F1, which is uh, usually a result of the, some chemotherapy treatments, and then you will see the increase of the micron 205 as well, but this simple upregulation of micron 205 is not able to um, make the cell comes back to the um, non-resistance room. So when, you, um, when we also increase the expression of three Micron 342, you see that this cooperative um, up, um, repression of the E2F1 repression by this micron has somehow led this uh, cells back to the non resistance room, which shows that these two micron is able to regulate uh, the E2F1 expression and then also uh, make the cells back to the non resistance rooms. This is what we expect to see and what we found. And uh, finally, of course, we want to validate whether this is really happening in vitro. And then we also tried with different amounts of microns, and then we showed that the abrogation of the tumor cells ha most happily when you use combined microns therapies. We also do the same for um, this um, combination index to see whether this uh, effect is synergistic or not. And we say this is more complex than we expect, and then at least when you increase the uh, um, concentration of the microns, the, we have seen the synergistic, synergistic effect in the uh, um, cancer cells. And finally, we can say we can, how can we answer this question? It's probably we can use both microns, like this micron 205 and micron 342, to synergistically replace an E2F1 repression, which can help favor the um, tumor, um, synthesize the tumor cells to chemotherapy. So, an, a bit of uh, expan expansion of based on this project, which we have uh, published recently, we somehow use mega information to illustrate how the Cooperative microns can regulate cancer gene in the context of a metastatic cancer. So we have um, included all this data in the data in the website to visualize how these microns cooperate to regulate cancer genes in the context of uh, metastatic melanoma. So which suggests uh, microns as a potential therapies for an um, adjacent treatment for cancer. So finally, I would like to thank you for your um, attention and also my collaborators from Rostock, as well from um, Sweden and uh, from um, Australia. And if you have more questions, um, I will be at po poster T1 to, and thank you. Yeah. One very short question. Yeah. The question is, in designing the microRNAs, I was wondering whether you take into account in the red repression of other members of E2F, for example, e 2 f 3 E2F2, and whether you check for those in these experimental setups, uh, or maybe just computationally to discard 
repression so, of those? So from our computation perspective, we only identify the spiding sites for E2F1, but not for the other families, because E2F1 is a complex uh, um, family mem um, of eight family members. And also our experiments show that this is specifically on E2F1, but not on the other family members. Okay, thank you. No problem, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.